Hello, my name is Baconism, I'm the permanent damage guy, and this is how I beat Minecraft without taking damage. Before we begin, I want to say god freaking damn, what a profile picture that is, that's kind of insane. No, we made it to 1000 subscribers, which is absolutely mental. But that leaves me thinking, the Covenant needs somewhere that we can stand strong and congregate. So I provide a link in the description leading you to my kind of unfinished Discord server. If you're interested, join and come hang out with me, myself, and the man. Some of you may know who that is, and some of you may not, but they're currently working on a very special video right now. At the end of this video, I'll show some of the bloopers of how I died in the other 9 attempts, but for now, let's just get started. I loaded the world and was immediately hit by the plague. Only the third coming of Christ could save me now, but that seemed wildly unlikely. With limited daylight and safety, I knew I had to act fast, so I chopped down some trees and soon realized that I had spawned on the Himalayan mountain range. I hiked through the day until I saw my first speck of hope, a humble village. I couldn't waste any time. I tried to find the antidote in this haystack to no avail, then stole a bed instead of making my own. I rested by the water in the frame of night. I shouldn't, wouldn't, and couldn't let mobs spawn in the night time. If I did, chances are I'd be dead. I borrowed some iron ingots and bolted away as fast as possible. I began to deforest the mountainside, because surviving here was bleak at best, and I was only making it worse by doing so. I lost track of time and had to hide again. Thankfully, some life managed to prosper up here, but I soon learned that life on the mountains was kill or be killed. I quickly became afraid of myself. What might I become in the pursuit of a cure? I borrowed another man's life and ran deeper into the mountains. I shoveled some snow and pondered if providing new snow-based warriors would be enough to atone for my sins. I prayed in the church and ran away before all my crimes had been discovered. A few moments later, I had realized that history was once again repeating itself. But this time, not exactly as I had a getaway plan. I had to sail a few hundred blocks to reconstruct this old portal. With a shield and pickaxe in hand, I entered an interdimensional labyrinth, but never could I have anticipated the fear I would soon feel inside. I galloped through the soul sand plains and, at gunpoint, trapped myself inside this wall. I wasn't ready to die, at least not yet, so I burrowed. But I didn't burrow far. And that was because the theoretical door knocked in my head, my theoretical sister I theoretically have decided to walk in, so my reaction remained mute. Whilst we're breaking down the fourth wall, if you're enjoying the video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Also, let me know if you prefer this more imaginative kind of storytelling or how I normally do things. Thanks and let's continue. I'm not sure if it was the adrenaline pumping or the stupidity that wafted around my brain. I made a larger opening and began to connect the bridges. As I tunneled through the underside, all I could hear were blood curdling cries and ashen groans. Was the failed portal I entered the entrance to hell? It seemed so. I must have been so naive to think that this could be where I found safety. I made a new bridge under the threat of being burnt to a crisp at any moment. I found an opening and was immediately attacked. I soon learnt life in hell was kill or be killed. My bloodless only grew as I removed the conscience from more tortured souls. I waited for more to try their hand, but eventually they admitted defeat. And so, I did as well. I had vanquished this malevolent fortress, but my soul still yearned for more. How much more? I was terrified, but I needed to find out. I left the confines of my burrow and made a break across the battlefield. I was slowed by the mud, but thankfully wasn't hit. I made a final sprint for my life and barely returned to the mortal plane unscathed. I remembered hearing whispers of a third dimension. Maybe that could satiate my lust. I crafted six assimate- assimated what? I crafted six axes and decimated a few trees before taking off into the wind again. I sailed the ocean blue, discovering otherworldly flora in my travels, and eventually arrived at a quaint little village in the savannah. I shaved the logs and cut the wood down into several thousand sticks, and eventually a kind cleric offered to assist me, of course at a reasonable fee. I took his hand without a word and stared down the whims of fate as life flashed before my eyes. I then realized I was holding a hay bale and the llama had no intent of killing me. I collected all my resources and took a final look at the village. Maybe here I could have emancipated. Maybe here I could have found peace from the bloodshed and plague. Maybe here I could have found home. At the end of the day, 
I'm carrying the plague, and my body has become used to the feeble and rundown aspects. At the end of the day, others haven't. Maybe life wasn't kill or be killed after all. Maybe I was just paranoid. I eventually passed through a familiar area and continued beyond before I was spotted. Over the last few days, I've changed so much. My ways were altered. Those kind villagers would never get to see that. Sure enough, and before I knew it, I had arrived. I carefully made my descent into the darkness, and then I realized, this was the end. I didn't know why I was doing this still, it felt like the plague was almost drawing me here, luring me. My suspicions were confirmed when I heard that unearthly cry. I fled the scene as fast as I could, my body weary and freezing. I couldn't feel my legs and suddenly, they just stopped. I looked fate in the eyes for a brief moment. I could hear my heart beat in my ears as I faced imminent death, but I could only smile. I'd come so far in a few days, I'd seen things, dark things, and faced them with such a brave face. Only if someone was here, only if someone could tell my story. I felt deep regret for the people I'd hurt along the way. The people I'd hurt, I had their hay bales. Well that was a bit scary, wasn't it? I climbed the stairs and found the gateway, then entered the final frontier. With pumpkin ahead and snowballs at my disposal, I took a deep breath and prepared for the worst. I slammed a few into the mighty beast's face, when it ran away, I ran away. I stabbed it again and again and again, until I heard a cry. And I soon learned that life in the end was kill or be killed.